Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare kingdom come will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, thank you for the divine connection between heaven and earth that makes it possible for us to do your will. We thank you that great things are ahead for planet earth. You have a plan that's going to be transformational and reformational and complete. And Father, all the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and we shall reign with you forever. Father, how exciting. What more of a excitement could we get so i thank you for the day lord for your word it's a lamp unto our feet a light to our pathway holy spirit of god come and teach us teach us all things i pray in jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. well we don't want to spend uh, much time at all but just to say if you uh, know of anybody that wants to register with the university and you haven't yet uh, uh, feel free to join up it's uh, reasonable you, uh, we're now finishing our accreditation. I say we thought we had it done, but we just have some final phase work we're doing right now to complete. It's quite a bit of work to, to qualify as a accredited university. They, re, they require a standard that becomes a national standard for all colleges and universities. So we have to comply with that. So we're doing well. And if you took your test last week, by the way, you guys, I, I'm either a really good teacher or I'm too easy on my tests <laughs> because we had some really high grades last week. So <laughs> we'll review that in the future here, all right? But uh, uh, so, so some of you did really, really well. We appreciate that. And uh, I think it's because you studied so hard, all right? So that's good. So be a part of Kingdom Life University. Really, uh, the key verse in... I, I think in all the New Testament is this verse, and it's right now in the chapter we're studying. Seek ye first the kingdom, kingdom of God and His righteousness. righteousness, and then everything else will be Amen. added unto you. Amen. I have a little blog on that's called The Simplicity of Christ. You know, people stumble over the simplicity of Christ. Business people think that to be intimate with Jesus is too simple to be business success. They think there's got to be more to it than that. When that is the key to success Amen. is intimacy with Christ. Amen. You know why? Because hidden in Christ are all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And when you get the direction of the Holy Spirit and hear the voice of God, as we're going to be talking about later today in the Lord's Prayer, you have an advantage over every business in the community. Vic, you know why? Because you're going to save yours a failure. That's right. Yeah. That's true. I mean, you might start a business off and it looks like you're the hottest thing in town, and then two years later you're bankrupt. You know Amen. what I mean? Amen. Why not find the secrets of the kingdom, connect to those in your life, because they do work. Amen. See, the Beatitudes are going to be the attitudes that be on the earth during the millennium. Amen. That's Everybody's going to walk in the Beatitudes. Amen. That's the kingdom atmosphere that's going to be on earth are the Beatitudes. Right. So if you want to know how you're going to look in the millennium, reigning with Christ, right. learn the Beatitudes. Amen. So, I mean, this stuff works. Don't you like things that work? Amen. Uh, chapter 6, Believer in His Worship, which we're looking at right now, which is, we'll see that in a moment. Believer in His Wealth. Our attitude toward money is simple. Be anxious for nothing. In the Lord's Prayer, give us this. Amen. Believe in His walk. We're going to look at that later. That's chapter 7. And then we looked at praying always. Now, uh, this is the Lord's Prayer. I'll run through it quickly if you haven't been here. Uh, the Lord's Prayer, our highest relationship, our Father, which is in heaven. Our highest worship, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Our highest expectation, thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Our highest provision, Give us this day our daily bread. I think I missed one there. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Our highest purpose. We're going to yeah. see that today. I missed that. Our highest promise. Forgive us this day our daily bread. Or for forgive us our debts as we. God's forgiveness is our highest promise. Amen. Our highest protection. Our highest protection. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. Our highest declaration. For thine is the kingdom. kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. We're going to look at this now. Uh, let's get in today. <clears throat> Thy kingdom come. Your kingdom come, Lord Jesus. Your kingdom come. Understanding the kingdom of God and all the aspects of that centers all your biblical theology. 
So I put it together a little chart for you all this morning. Is that okay? Amen. You like charts? Amen. All right. I like charts. I know about businesses love charts, you know. Everything's charted out and per charts and plans. And when you build a house, what do you make? You make it, get an architect, and you just go out there and start building. You have an architect. This is the architectural structure of the kingdom, as I understand it. And you may have, if you don't totally agree with me, pray, and God will show you the truth. Amen. <laughs> Okay, but it's all about the kingdom because it's about the king. Amen. And what we've been studying in Matthew is the entrance of the kingdom through the king. Amen. You see, what is the kingdom of God? Let's go back to basics. The kingdom of God is wherever Jesus rules without resistance. Amen. Right. It's wherever he rules. That's the simplest form of kingdom that you can understand. Amen. It's the rulership of Christ the over king. all Amen. things, the king. Amen. So how did, where, how, where was the kingdom introduced? Well, John the Baptist was the last of the Old Testament prophets. Right. He preached the Old Testament form of the kingdom and said, repent and be baptized. Mm -hmm. But he said, there comes one after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with a new form of kingdom. Right. He will baptize you with a Holy Spirit and fire. Amen. So Jesus entered, uh, introduced a new phase of the kingdom of God. The phase of the Holy Spirit and fire, which we are now living in that yes. age. Amen. Of the Holy Spirit and fire. Amen. And that fire is a purging fire, it's an anointing fire, it's a cleansing fire, it's an empowering fire. And as we're going to see, it's going to conclude this age with fire. Amen. It's earth. It's going to have another fire. It's Amen. going to burn. Amen. <laughs> we're headed towards some interesting times in the future That's called right. the Great Tribulation. And it's going to be an exciting time because Susan, you and Beverly and other prayer people are going to be like Moses extending the rod over the earth and praying for the judgments, the trumpets, the bowls, and the vials. And the church is the one that starts and ends the judgments. Do you know that? That's right. Read Revelation. That's right. The trumpets don't even start until the prayer of the saints is full at the altar. Amen. It's going to be prayer that moves the hand of God in the tribulation Amen. period. And the church will be led by the Holy Spirit to know how to pray, Amen. when to pray, that the judgments cease. In one judgment alone, a third of mankind's going to die. Right. Just one judgment. That's a pretty heavy judgment. Yeah. You're talking about two billion people or, or more. Are going to die on the earth just in one judgment alone so the tribulation that's coming is big but the revival during the tribulation completes the harvest yeah. Yeah. so it's a parallel of massive judgment on the earth and massive revival I'll, we'll get there in a minute so jesus introduced the kingdom and then the gospels are the demonstration of the kingdom amen casting out demons healing the sick raising the dead preaching and proclaiming the acceptable year of the lord Jesus said that's why he was anointed, Mark, uh, Luke 4. Is that exciting? Amen. And then he took that same anointing because he operated under transmitted authority and he gave the very same authority to us in this age. We'll see that in a minute. So it started with the baptism of Jesus, a new form of kingdom. If you didn't get that study, go back to Matthew chapter 3 of this series. And then the king's work is completed on earth. That's the end of Matthew. We're not quite there yet. But he's going to complete the work. And he's going to, say, he's going to give the greatest three words in the New Testament. It is finished. It's done. Amen. You don't need to... Do our work is not a do right. gospel. It's a done gospel. Amen. 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 He has provided in his righteousness everything we need to complete the entire purpose of planet Earth That's through it. every age. That's it. It's done. Done. So that takes all the pressure off our back, folks. You don't have to work and be, to be spiritual. You need to embrace his righteousness. Amen. Amen. By grace and faith, you embrace, you, you declare who you are, Amen. Ephesians 1. <clears throat> This is not try hard. This is done. Amen. It's a faith thing, man. You go, Willie, we operate by Amen. faith. We, we, we look at who we are by faith. You say, Amen. I don't deserve it. You're right. That's right. Hey, Thomas, God bless you. Now, the king's work is completed on earth. Then the king leaves. Hello. He takes off. He gets out of here. That's right. 
He says, if I do, it is necessary for you that I go away. That's right. For if I go not away, the comfort, of the, comfort of the Holy Spirit will not come to this earth. He says, I'm one man. That's right. Jesus came as a son of man. man. He was located in, in one locale at a time. That's All right. he could do is works in one place. And when he went to a pool, he only healed one person at that pool, or even though there were many sick. He was limited. I, I know it sounds weird, no. but Jesus was limited. But why did he, what did he? He was. He was demonstrating for three years how we're going to function so after he, he leaves. That's right. Empowered with the same authority, That's right. same power, That's right. same Holy Spirit, Amen. same anointing. Amen. Jesus said, the works that I do, John 14, 12, you do. will do also. Amen. And greater works. Why greater works? It's, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. Amen. Because we're located in China now. Yeah. We're, we're located in Vietnam. We're located, we're located Vic, in, in, in Dade City. Amen. We're located all over the world. Amen. We're not limited to Jerusalem, to Nazareth, to Jericho. That's right. Man, this thing is big. Amen. And the church is expanding, yeah. And it's growing, and it's increasing. Amen. And the kingdom Amen. of God is triumphing worldwide. Praise God. You can't stop it. Amen. You persecute it, it grows more. That's right. The poor devil must be frustrated. Amen. He just can't stop this thing. It's like a, it's like a flood coming against him. Amen. Even though he's going to do everything he can, at the end of this age, man, he's going to... He's going to pull out all the stops, get the biggest army that's ever been assembled in the world. He's going to get a ten-nation confederacy. He's Amen. going to put together uh, the world economy to stop the kingdom. That's right. His whole purpose is stop the kingdom. He says this thing's taken over the world. Amen. And to his dismay, the king flat comes back and destroys everything, binds him for a thousand years, and we continue, now we reign with Christ on earth, and we build cities, Vic, you're getting ready to build cities. Why is God training you in building? We need builders in the millennium. So much is gonna be destroyed at the end of the tribulation period that we're gonna to have to have people rebuild the earth, but there's gonna be no curse on the earth. Anna, no curse. By the way, your daughter, when we go down to the street, you, your, your, your team has to sing on the streets, Amen. man. You guys were awesome the other night. Amen. That was awesome. Wasn't it, who was at the Amen. coffee? Wasn't that awesome at the awesome. coffee? Whoa, we launched our prayer ministry. By the way, next week at 9 o'clock, hello, get up early and be here at 9. We're going to have an hour of prayer now from before the study from now on. And this room is going to be sanctified for prayer because the Lord showed me we need to start praying now for the harvest. We need to get before God's throne and start grabbing the horns of the altar. And I have to tell you, my, my wife and I laugh. I woke up this morning. I wanted to wake my wife up. I woke up this morning and looked at the clock. That's what time it was. 3.33. I get up and pray during the night, and then I go back to bed for a while, and I do the radio station. I woke up at 3.33. I looked at my speedometer there, and I had reset my, you know when I fill gas? I reset my speedometer to zero, you know, each time. And, and not the speedometer, but my oh, mileage. Nice. And, and I was driving there, then I looked down. Guess what it showed? 3.33. I pull up to a car two days ago at the stoplight, and guess what the license plate says? 333. And then it had some number. I, was, I said, Lord, what's this 333 thing? He says, well, look, you dummy. I mean, they didn't say that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Jeremiah 33.3. Everywhere I'm turning, I'm seeing this 333.3. Ask of me, God says. And I will show you great and mighty things Amen. that you know not. He said, Jerry, you're not spending enough time in prayer. You're not getting your group to pray enough. This is not about you. It's about grabbing the horns of the altar and bringing heaven to earth. Amen. And one of the things that does that is prayer along yes. with worship. Isn't that right, Mar Amen. Marcus? When you worship, you connect with heaven. When you pray, you connect with heaven. He says, you've got to connect with heaven more if this harvest thing's going to get done. Amen. Amen. Stephanie, we got we got to we got to connect, Susan. Amen. we got to pray. Amen. So join me next week here at 9. What time? 9 a.m. One more time. 9 a.m. All right. <laughs> By the way, we're at university, so we start on time. When the bell rings Amen. at the university, we're, we start right at 10. All right. And I know Bo likes that. Bo, you want to come in and sit down, brother? You're welcome here. And uh, all right. So praise God. Now let's finish it up. Jesus left the earth. He left the earth in his ascension. But he said, you guys go hang out at Jerusalem for a few days. Get ready. Prepare a place for my presence. By the way, you can do that in your life. 
David prepared a place for the ark. Mm -hmm. You can prepare a place for the presence of God. I've been getting into worship night and day. I've been carrying this thing around. These tablets are wonderful. I've gone through the whole of the gateway worship at least five times in the last three days. I'm just, it, I'm, it's just putting me in the spirit, man. I, can you tell I'm a little bit excited? <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm motivated because I've been worshiping, getting in the presence of God and God's given me revelation. When you get in his presence, you get revelation. Yes. And so I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> And he says, you go hang out for a few days at this place called the Upper Room and you're going to see this fire. This fire that I was baptized with back at the Jordan that I've been operating under is going to manifest itself even upon you. We call it Pentecost. And the fire fell. Tongues of fire appeared above everybody. They were anointed. What? What was the purpose of Pentecost? Pentecost. What we're doing. You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses unto me. Not witnessing about what you're doing. It's you're witnessing me to the world. Uh, the Revelation uh, book is not about the end times. It's about Jesus. It's his action plan to finish the age. Amen. Hallelujah. Good preaching. Come on. And, and so the fire fell. And the fire is still falling. Yes. Amen. We were over in the Philippines, and there's a story over in the Philippines that's been proven true. This attorney lived across the street from a Pentecostal church, and he hated the church. Hated it. He told his wife, he said, you know what? He says, I'm going to go over there and burn that church down. Because they were having a revival, and every night they'd sing, you know, into the wee hours of the morning. Filipinos are nuts. Mm -hmm. they, you know, I honestly drove across Manila one time. I was supposed to speak way across town. It took us four hours to get across Manila. If you've ever been, a three-lane road is always six lanes That's of cars. True. I mean, it's That's crazy. True. And uh, there's no rules and regulations on the road. I mean, it is nuts. And we, I, I told my team, I said, nobody's going to be at, at that place. I said, we're supposed to be there at 7. It's 10 o'clock. Oh, no, they said everybody will be waiting. I said, no, no way. I mean, this is not America, people. And um, I get there, and the place is jammed. They had sung and worshipped 7 to 10, waiting for us to arrive. So they're nuts, you know. So these Filipinos were worshipping in a revival into the night hours, like they do in Haiti and Africa and some of these countries. They get passionate. Isn't that right? In Nigeria, come on. That's right, Thomas. Come on, sing like y'all sang the other night, man. They get going. And I'm telling you, it's awesome. Amen. And this attorney went over to his bedroom window and looked out. Ha! He said, I don't have to burn the church down. He said, it's on fire. He said, look. He said, look, the thing, the blooming thing's on fire. He said, wait a minute. He stood for about 10 minutes and this huge flame had engulfed the church. He says, what in the world? He said, the church is burning down. He said, it's on fire, but it's not burning down. That's right, amen. He said to his wife, you know what? We better go over there and check this place out. <laughs> he said, I've never seen anything like this in my life. He went over and got saved. Amen. So sometimes that fire actually manifests in this age. Might show up for you one of these days. Hello? I feel it every once in a while my bones. Don't you, yeah, Linda? Yeah. I know you do. Yeah, know. You operate in the fire. You walk around on fire all the time. I love your spirit. I tell you what, the fire of God is here. Amen. We have a baptism of fire to finish this harvest. Amen. Yeah. This is no small stuff, and nothing can yeah. stop fire. Look at the power of fire yeah. as it sweeps across the plains, and you can't stop fire. Amen. Talk to the Californians. So, so the kingdom power was manifest in at Pentecost, all right? Right there at Pentecost. And then today, after Pentecost, the kingdom is now experienced on earth and expanded. We don't have to pray for the kingdom to come. It's already here. Amen. Amen. It's in a preform to the millennium. It's not in its perfection, but it's in its time of preparation. Amen. What is this whole age here? What, what, what's the purpose of this age? It's equipping the bride to reign with Christ. Amen. This Amen. is a training season. Amen. We are in a training season to get ready to rule and reign with Him up here. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not a great... Bill's better investment than I am, but listen. If I told you, 
And I would go on TV locally. I'll go on Channel 10 and I'll make an announcement. You come with $80 and I will give you a truckload of pure gold. A truckload. And, and I had the wherewithal to do that. You think I'd have a line of people? Oh, you just bring me $80 bills and I'll, I'll give you a truckload of gold. A whole yeah. truckload, Willie. Oh, yeah. I have two trucks here. <laughs> You're going to bring two trucks. What are you saying, Jerry? Think of this. From an investment standpoint, Larry, $80 in hundreds of billions of dollars is a pretty good investment, isn't it? Is that, right. is that good? That's right. If you serve Jesus only 80 short years, Bo, your return is more than 100 Amen. billion years. Hallelujah. It even makes good business sense Amen. to serve Jesus. Joe, you're a business it makes good business sense to serve, serve Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to give all I've got for 80 years. Amen. I, and if I go 90, I'm just going to you know, fizzle out after 90 Amen. probably. Amen. Amen. Who knows anymore? I, I feel better now than I did at 35. Amen. If you're not marching with me, get out of the way. I'm going. Hello. Amen. This is action evangelism. Amen. Amen. Yes, it's not sit ye, it's go ye. That's yes, right. And the power of Pentecost was go ye to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the what? All the world. Uttermost. That's right. And that's what we're doing is going to the uttermost. Okay. Amen. So we have the church age. And then at the end of this church age, we have this great tribulation, which I'm going to be teaching on shortly. Uh, listen, I can't sleep nights hardly. This book of Revelation is burning in my spirit. I've never gotten such a simple understanding of the book of Revelation as I now have. I'm telling you, I'm going to be teaching this thing here starting this fall. I'm, I, get, get your friends and neighbors out because it's going to put the entire ages now into simple understanding. The book of Revelation is not hard to understand. It's not at all. It is not. We make it complex. Yeah. And we're going to teach it in a very simple way. You will understand what God's purpose for the ages is and how this age is going to end and how during this period right here, all governments, 232 governments of the world are going to be immediately transitioned into the bride. Yes. Amen. <laughs> All the governments of this world are going to shut down. The devil is going to be bound and, and the bride is going to be taking over. I, I was thinking about this this morning. You know what occupies the mind of God? Jesus. Jesus. The mind of the Father. All he thinks about and talks about is, is Jesus. Study the Word. The Father's obsessed with Jesus, the Son. You know what the Son's obsessed with? Uh, his bride. His bride. His bride. All he can think about night and day is you. That's right. He's obsessed. He's, 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 God is the greatest romantic that ever lived. That's right. That's true. He's an incurable romantic. Yes. That's right. He loves his bride. Amen. Amen. He showed it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's true. If he already laid his life down for us, Thomas, what's, what one more could do? That's right. <laughs> If you already demonstrated that to us, what, you don't think he's obsessed with you today? I like that word obsession. Yeah, it's, the, it's the divine Me obsession. Too. Me too. He is passionate about you and your success right. and you learning, getting ready right now to build cities, to rule and reign with him, to, to head up governments. He's getting people prepared. And you know who the people he's going to use are the servant people. Right. They're, they're the ones that are bowing to his, his authority. They're the ones that see his his power today Amen. and see at the time of great tribulation the king returns oh boy be here for revelation study you will you're going to be so fired up you're going to have, have to put out the rocket fuel somehow all right so this is good all right now the next one next one are you taking the notes you're following the notes here okay the next first of all is is what thy will be done this is what our highest purpose if you're filling in your notes, our highest purpose. Did I cover all that? Let me see your notes here a minute, Willie. I want to make sure I'm covering all my notes here. I'm getting no. so excited about this. Okay. Uh, our highest purpose is thy will be done. Our highest, our highest uh, expectation, the highest expectation is thy kingdom come. Amen. You see, it's in the heart of every man to return to Eden. Amen. Why do you yeah. put gardens in your backyard? That's right. Amen. Come on. That's right. That's it's right. within the heart of every man. And Jules, uh, let's go down to the basics of the kingdom. I'm going to make sure I cover that, and then you can fill this in Amen. later. Really. Um, it's wherever Ju Jesus rules without resistance. All right? Fill that in your blank, because you're going to be tested on this later. All right? By the way, I want to give you guys your test results back today, Anna and, and Thomas and everybody and Marcus. You guys did good. Amen. You did good, sweetheart. Amen. You did good. Amen. 
You, you got an A. I shouldn't announce it to the class, but hello. It's his place of authority and power. We have no authority unless we are under authority, okay? We are training for reigning. We are in training for reigning. It is the center of the New Testament message. That's true. The kingdom is. Amen. It is the center, central message of this, of, of this age. I don't know what that one is. It is I, I didn't bring my notes. Hello, I'm only the professor. All right. All right. But anyway, seek ye first the kingdom of God. There you go, Willie. Okay, I'll make sure. Now the top of the next page. Our greatest purpose. Our greatest purpose is to what? Do His will. Jesus prayed, Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Now we have to assume, both from Jesus' prayer, that the will of God for you is perfect in heaven. That's right. Right? That's right. The will, God's will for your life has been perfected in heaven. Jeremiah 29, 11. What's that say? That, that, that he knows your plan. He knows your plan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good verse, Willie. Yeah. Now, the key is getting it from heaven to earth. earth. Right. Even Jesus had a struggle with this. Don't, don't get me wrong now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Even Jesus struggled with it as a man. That's right. He did. He did. He did. He was facing the cross and he said, Father, if there be any other way. Right. He said, man, can, can, can you come up with plan B? Uh, that's right. Man, I've seen these crucifixions that the Romans do and I'm going to be suffering for the sins of the world. All sickness and disease and emotional depression and suicide and, and all this is going to be on my back. My, my, my. Put yourself there. huh? He says, I'm going to go through such a darkness that, Father, you're, you're going to turn your face away from me. I don't know if I can face that. We've never been without God's love. That's right. All we've gone through, Willie. That's right. But then he came back to what? Nevertheless, your will. not my will. Now, get this. Jesus' will at that point was contrary to the Father's will, and yes. he wasn't sinning. That's right. No, That's he was. Right. No, he was not. Yeah. Because he immediately brought his will back under the yes. will of the Father. The kingdom. The kingdom. Yes. The kingdom. Yes. His purpose. Amen. So when you're struggling with the will of God in your life, don't get uptight. Jesus struggled with the same thing. Hello. That's right. And he was perfect. That's right. So getting the will of God from heaven to earth can be a little bit, I don't want to use the word tricky, but you know what I mean by right. that. Can be a little difficult. John 7, 17, if any man wills to do his will, he shall know the teaching, whether it is of God or whether I speak, and the Greek word there is from myself. My, my, my. What Jesus is doing here, now watch this. He's identifying the different voices that we face in knowing the will. That's right. He said there's an inner voice. That's our biggest problem, it's not the devil's voice. That's right. The biggest problem is the inner voice. Mm -hmm. That's right. That voice of the flesh. That's right. <laughs> That says, I'm not going to do it God's way. I'm going to do my thing. You know what pride is? My definition of pride is living independent of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. That's, That's humility good. is living under the rulership of the king. Good definition. Not diminishing who you are. Humility. Uh, we talked about meekness. Meekness is power under control. That's all it is. Humility isn't acting, you know, poor and dumb. That's right. Humility is being under authority and know who you are That's right. in Christ, man. That's right. Yes. Yeah. As a child of God. Amen. Come on. Amen. So if any man will to do his will. So the first thing you need to do in knowing the will of God is you've got to will to do his will. That's right. Does this make sense? Yes. Amen. This is not rocket scientists. Jesus said, uh, John 6, 38, For I came down not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Amen. Why did Jesus get alone with the Father constantly? He was... Hearing the voice of the Father. That's right. What do you have for me to do today, Father? Yeah. That's right. Well, I walk down this path. You're going to be spitting on the ground, making an eyeball. Okay. Okay. Sounds good to me. Let's go do it. John 5. See, everything Jesus did, the Father showed him, by the way. That's right. 
Je Jesus yeah. never once acted independent Amen. of the Father. Amen. 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 He demonstrated how the kingdom worked on earth. Yes. That's right. This is good stuff. This is good teaching. Yeah, Thank you, Lord. I'm not, this is not me teaching. It's the Holy Spirit. I can say that. John 5, 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. See, Jesus showed us how this worked in a man. Yes. Himself. How he functions. So my greatest purpose today is to seek God's will, find it, and do it. Now, I know certain things because everything in this word is his will. 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 One thousand percent. Amen. What I read here, I do not have to doubt that's, that's and right. question Amen. whether it's God's will. Amen. Amen. So, mighty woman, I already know it's God's will that no man should perish. Amen. 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 Why are we passionate about the world harvest? Everybody ought to hear the gospel one time before Amen. they die, at least Amen. one time. Because I know that's God's will. And it's the last words of Jesus. Amen. Uh -huh. All power has been given unto me, that chart. He said when he left, he left this earth. He said, I, now listen, guys. I have been fully empowered from the Father to sit at his right hand and command the nation. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Like so he says, go ye therefore. Yeah. That's right. Amen. See, the Great Commission comes out of Jesus' position at the right hand Amen. of the Father. See, you see what I'm saying? Amen. His place of authority becomes the foundation of the Great Commission. Amen. And the minute... I'm getting going here, man. Yeah. Breathe, breathe, breathe. 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 The minute you go, you get empowered. Amen. Amen. Yes. As they will. I have never stepped on a foreign soil of any country or gone on a mission yeah. trip where I haven't felt immediate Amen. additional yeah. anointing. Amen. Amen. Yes. Every, Every time. time. Amen. Amen. Every time. Blow I am with you always. That yep. doesn't mean you can't fly. That's right. <laughs> Tell my wife that. <laughs> now, how do we know the will of God as we close it tied together? Number one, present your bodies. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Acknowledge that you are not your own. You know what you are? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know that? That's right. That's right. Now, let me throw a little curveball at you. There are two Greek words for the word temple. One is the word aron which means the courtyard, the outer temple, the gates, the brazen altar, the whole ball of wax. That's the aron in the Greek. Then there's another Greek word called naos. Naos. It's called the Holy of Holies. Holies. What was in the Holy of Holies? The Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant. And where did God's presence dwell? Which word did Paul use? Aaron or naos? Naos. Naos. Go study it. Know you're not that your body is the naos of God. Amen. You are the New Testament equivalent to the Holy of Holies Holy. in the Old Testament. Amen. Amen. That's right. Hello. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amen. That kind of puts a little bit of That's right. demand on us today to live maybe a little more in His presence. Hello. Oh. Present your body as a living sacrifice. This, get this, this is God's platform that's right. Amen. Of the kingdom on earth today. Amen. Point it. That's right. I am, I am God's, God's, platform God's platform for the kingdom, for the kingdom, kingdom to be manifest, to be manifest, manifest on, earth on earth today. 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 Hallelujah. Why did Mary get so excited? I told you this in the first teaching on Matthew. She knew she was birthing the kingdom of God on Amen. earth. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. In the fullness of time, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Can you imagine Mary getting a revelation that she was going to birth the King Amen. of the universe, of heaven and earth, of creator of all things? Yes. Her creator. <laughs> I don't diminish Mary. That's right. Blessed art thou among women. Among women. The two sayings of Mary, I love, we made it a theme of our ministry for a whole year. She said. says, be it unto me according to thy yeah. word. And then she said, when they, the first miracle, when the, the servants they came and, and they said, this man, your son, is telling us to get pots of water and he's going to make wine. Are, are you sure, Mary? Are you sure about this? She says, whatever he commands you to do, you do it. I like this woman. Yeah. <laughs>
I like this woman. We need to embrace the beauty of this woman who became the vessel of God to, to birth God's kingdom on earth. Oh, God, don't go there. All right. <laughs> That you got to commit to do His will. Right. You got to commit to do His will, and then you you got to listen to His voice. Amen. You will not know the will of God without developing an ability to hear His voice. That's right. Now remember, there are three voices. Jesus already talked about the inner voice. My will, boy, can that will be strong? Hello. Yes. Anybody have children? Yes. <laughs> Self-will can be pretty powerful That's sometimes. Kid. There's that inner voice. And you know, the psychologists tell us over 80% of our talk is self-talk. That's true. Except like maybe Linda and a few other... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's the same. She'll get talking and it just goes on and on. You know? And God put women here to balance this out. <laughs> I'm in trouble now, Linda. I'm sorry. You have to forgive me, all right? But self-talk. Unless you're married, you know, self talk. So, so there, there's a self talk, and this, I'm just digging my hole deeper. Aren't I? All right. Oh, you deeper, deeper. <laughs> I may not get out of it. I better just quit while I'm ahead. All right. So, the first voices we can hear are just our own voices, and you know, a lot of people confuse that inner voice with the voice of God. That's right. That's right. People will tell me, you know, the Lord told me. Mm -hmm. And it's so contrary to the, the word, word of God. God. Yeah. A ten-year-old, two-year-old can yes. know the difference. That's true. <laughs> You know it's not God telling him to do That's that. Right. Hello, anybody home? Yes. Yes. Come on. Then the second voices we hear are the demonic voices. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know these little imps will ride on your shoulders. Yes. Yes. And they'll say, you won't have enough money at the yes. end of the month. God's going to quit on you this month. He Save. took care of you last month. This month's a washout. You watch. And that little fear comes on your That's shoulder, right. you know. And God doesn't give it. So how do you overcome the demonic voice? The Word of God. The Word of God. Jesus right. said three times, it is written to Satan. Amen. So what you do is you quote the Word. Amen. You say, get off my back, devil. Amen. 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 God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. Amen. My God shall supply all my needs. Right. And not only that, He's going to give me an abundance. Amen. Amen. Get lost. Amen. 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 Hello. Amen. Yes. Good preaching. We command those demons. I do it all the time. Yes. And my spirit will start doing it. When I start getting an, an attack, I know when the demons are starting to speak to me. That's right. And by the way, demons are assigned to families because yes, they, they know the weaknesses of that family. They so they'll hang generation. Yeah, there are yeah, generational yeah. spirits yeah. that'll come yeah. on you that were on your parents. Yes. Right. And if you don't learn to, to de 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 demolish those by the power of the word and moving in the spirit in your right. life, right. not the flesh, they'll, they'll, you'll, they'll have a gateway to your heart, yeah. your mind, constantly. And that's where they work is in your mind. That's right. They'll speak to you. You've got to identify demonic spirits yeah. and put them down immediately. Yeah. But I love the last, the voice of God. We're going to finish with this. The voice of God. Learning to hear the voice of God, people. Learning to hear the voice of God. This is your highest calling today. Amen. How do I do it? Well, I, I was up early this morning. I listened to worship for a while. My gateway worship put this right up to my ear. And then I start praying in the Spirit for a while. Because you know what? If I don't get in the Spirit, I get in the flesh. Yes. That's right. That's right. Remember, go back to my study on spirit, soul, and body. You'll mm -hmm. get this. The only thing that gets saved is your spirit. That's yes, right. Your soul and your body have to get sanctified by the Spirit. That's right. So, if, you know, if, if you're addicted to drugs, you receive Jesus. You know what? You're still going to be addicted to drugs yes. the day after you receive Jesus. That's right. Mm -hmm. Body's going to react the same way. You're going to want to... Do the drug just like you did two days ago before you were saved. People get confused about this, so they get discouraged. Mm -hmm. They say, well, I must have not gotten saved, my, you know, because I still have the same cravings. <laughs> you know why? Because you're, 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 you're not moving in the Spirit. When you, when you start fulfilling the Spirit through the holy power of the Holy Spirit, and your Spirit becomes a dominant factor in your life, your body, your soul, your mind, your conscience, your imagination all fall into place yes, behind amen. the presence of God in your spirit. Amen. It's your spirit. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And you're going to have this flesh till the day you die. Amen. It's going to hang on you, unfortunately. And it's going to, and it, it has to die daily, as we said. You get up in the morning, and if you gave it one night's rest, it's ready to take over yes, that day. That's right. So if I don't get into the Spirit immediately in the morning, I can't. I won't hear the voice of God. That's right. I'll hear so many other voices that's the truth. that by 8 o'clock in the morning, I've already shut God out for the day. That's right. 
Hello, does this make Amen. sense? Yes. That's why the, the principle of the first fruits yes. works. Give God the first yep. fruit of the day. Amen. Does, does this work? Amen. First fruit of the day. And I told you I wasn't going to stick to exactly 30 minutes some of our teaching. You take all this time to come out, so I may go 35, right. even 40 minutes because is that okay for the classroom? Right. I mean, that's not going to destroy anybody. And, and, and because we want to get this teaching done. Right. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. And let's, let's begin to prepare ourselves for the book of Revelation. I'm Amen. telling you, start reading the book of Revelation. Start getting ready with the book of Revelation because yes. you are going to you're going to be so fired up Amen. because you know what chapter 24 and 25 of Matthew goes right into the Revelation so these two tie together and I said Lord what do I do after Matthew do I go th all through the epistles and all that and he says no you already taught all that through your university he said go go right from here and redo the book of Revelation he said you didn't do it right the first time. All right. Amen. I didn't do it right. I didn't have the time on the radio to prepare. And I, there's some things that, so I'm, I'm pulling all my teaching that I've done in Revelation. Woo! And God's given me, me I, I feel a, a simpler, Amen. better approach. So if you've been listening to Revelation yeah, online, so yeah, get, get, throw it out. Just toss it out or get, get it out of there. Uh, just, uh, in fact, Carol, don't uh, download Revelation anymore to any of the students because we're going to get, we're going to start in September. And because I've been praying for two years that God would give me this revelation, and He's done it. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's just like it's like a, a child taking the coloring book, and it's just filling in the lines now. And it's not that complicated. So get ready, get ready for what God's going to do.